Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now what we have here is the new Core i3-13100F. It's currently the cheapest in Intel's new 13th generation processor lineup. I say currently because who knows whether we'll have any Pentiums or Celerons. Hopefully we do, but that's a mystery for now. So what do we get with the new 13100F? Well, we get the chip itself, of course, and we also get a pretty decent looking cooler, very solid in construction with a nice copper bottom. Now this cost me £120 from Scan here in the UK, and while it is the i5-13400F, I'm looking forward to testing more, I thought we'd take a look at this thing because I think it represents fantastic value for money, and to be honest, this is the new budget king as far as I'm concerned, or at least it's the best quad-core money can currently buy. What I want to do first of all is compare it to the old 12th gen flagship in terms of the i3s, the i3-12-300 a chip that I think is still very good, but one I could never quite recommend due to how close it was to the 12100F. If we take a look at a couple of comparative results, you'll see that the new 13100F slightly outperforms the 12th Gen 12300 in the Cinebench multi and single core tests as well as a DaVinci Resolve render test. But as I said, only slightly. While it may be a photo finish, the 13100F is still victorious. And for the money, well, I think this is a very solid choice, especially considering that 1700 socket motherboards do seem to be dropping in price as well. Let's move on to a few gaming tests before I throw up another set of comparisons. So when it comes to games, four cores and eight threads in 2022, sorry, 2023. There are no integrated graphics with the F variant, as there never is, but I've got my paired with a 3060 Ti today to make the most out of this chip. Possibly an unrealistic pairing in the real world, but it does allow this thing to reach its maximum potential in some situations, although in others, the chip does have more to give. I'd actually recommend a 6600 from AMD or an NVIDIA RTX 3050 in terms of a pairing. Our first game was CSGO. Here we saw over 600 FPS according to the in-game benchmark map. This is one of the workshop maps available on Steam. The 1.1% lows were also very solid. Now because this is a 4-core 8-threaded chip, there's no escaping the fact that in some demanding titles you are going to see utilisation of at least 80-90%. And that was true in Cyberpunk 2077, especially when the crowd density is turned up to high like it was in my test. Now despite this high usage, we didn't actually see poor percentile figures, which you might expect to see from a CPU that appears to be struggling. The 1% low was 56 and the 0.1% low was 45, so the game remained pretty solid even with this chip. This is definitely the best i3 money can buy. I'd still keep an eye on 12100F prices though, because with the release of this, you might find that that is actually starting to get cheaper. The next gen Witcher 3 at 1080p Ultra with no hairworks or RT ran with 85 FPS. The 1% low and the 0.1% low was pretty solid, but there were a few little dips here and there in busier town and city areas. This is nothing that I haven't come to expect from the Witcher when using all different types of CPUs. Nothing that stood out to me here as particularly troublesome, just like throughout the entirety of this test. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered ran like a dream with over 100 FPS. As I was saying, you throw any game at this and the i3 is going to hold up nicely. I wouldn't suggest going any higher than a 3060 or 3060 Ti, put it that way. I think if you do want something a little more powerful to target 60 FPS at 1440p, for example, then it would make much more sense going with an i5. The 13400F has also been released and hopefully I'll have a review or a build video using one of those soon. That would definitely be the better choice if you want to use a higher end graphics card. 
GTA 5 stays in the benchmarks because it is still very popular, though these days it is quite easy to run unless you max everything out like I've done here, bar MSAA which was set to X4. Still this can prove troublesome on some systems, but here 113 FPS was the average with some pretty solid percentile lows following suit. The game still holds up quite well visually as well, and it will run very nicely on this quad core chip, which is more than I can say of the quad cores from years gone by, which would probably struggle with these higher settings, especially in busier and more populated areas. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022 1080p Ultra preset, high anti-aliasing and high textures here, not a problem. Of course the GPU is doing more of the work, but that only tells half the story and with any graphics card you need a strong processor that is going to hold up its end when it comes to those percentile lows and it does so very well here, 96 and 67 FPS. You cannot go wrong with an i3 in 2022, early 2023 as far as I'm concerned. It will be interesting to see how 4 cores and 8 threads do later on in the year. We've got some pretty big releases coming out but I think it's going to do okay though a lot of you may be thinking that the extra investment on an i5 would be the wiser choice and if you've got the money of course it would be but for all of you with less to spend i think the i3 represents something that is truly fantastic value for money now that is providing it's not overpriced or unavailable where you live i don't want it to just appear in stock and then disappear like the ryzen 3300x did back in the day because that was a beast as well i think these are here to stay though and as i said if you can't find one a 12100f will still do a fantastic job Forza horizon 5 the figures here were based on the in-game benchmark 108 fps with solid percentile lows once again Finally, we have Mafia Definitive Edition at 1080p with the highest settings. Again, no issues here, though I did notice one or two little dips, but this seems to be commonplace with Mafia Definitive Edition. It's something I've noticed before, but it only happened once or twice, and that was that. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I want to throw up a couple of comparisons here to the best of the 12th Gen i3s, the 12300. I would do a direct comparison with a 12100F, but I no longer have my 12100F. So the 12300 is the next best thing. It's actually better, but gameplay-wise, it really isn't that different from the 12100F. The first result is CSGO at the lowest settings. Of course, 619 FPS on average with the 13th Gen chip which outperforms the 12th gen chip by a little bit, but when you're seeing over 500, 600 FPS anyway, this difference isn't really all that. The 1.1% lows were remarkably similar as well, so very close in terms of performance here. In Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p Ultra, again the averages were close, the 13100F hit about 4 FPS extra, it had better 1 and 0.1% lows as well, but honestly, again, this isn't anything you're going to notice unless you have a frame rate counter enabled. Finally then, it's Cyberpunk. I chose these three games because they were the most CPU intensive of the ones I tested today, and I thought this is where we'd see the biggest difference. This is probably the biggest difference you're going to see um, in terms of comparing the 13th Gen i3s to the 12th Gen ones. Again, 93 compared to 97. In fact, the 0.1% low with the 12300 was actually better by 1 FPS, but this falls within margin of error territory. It's nice to see, though, that the 13100F, the most entry level of the new 13th Gen i3s, can outpace the highest end i3 from the 12th generation though and all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching this has been my i3 13100f first look review sort of thing if you enjoyed it leave a like down below leave a dislike if you didn't let me know what you think of the chip of course as i've been saying the 12100 is still just as good of a choice if you can find that 20 30 quid dollars euros cheaper than the 13100f that's going to be the one to buy but there we go Subscribe to the channel if you want to and you haven't done so already and you enjoy the content of course and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.